2019 B9 S4. I'm between you guys and IE for tuning. What makes the tunes different or yours better performance wise? Uh, so, so just uh, one one quick point is as far as performance goes, we've proven that our tunes faster. Um, we we currently hold the world record, which is four miles per hour faster in the quarter mile and half a second faster than IE's. Uh, with the same modification levels and weight reduction. So nobody has a faster B9S4 tune in the world right now than we do. And then we've had many customers back up these really fast times. Um, I don't know a lot about IE's tuning. Um, you can go watch uh, our, our deep dive videos where we go into great detail about our tuning. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I think we're way out ahead of everyone else. Take IE out of it. Um, as far as our TCU tuning, as far as our ECU tuning, the performance, the smoothness, the refinements, uh, our integration uh, with TCU and the ECU together, uh, you're just not going to find a better B9 3.0T tune on the market anywhere. Um, so yeah, and and the feedback has been phenomenal. I don't, uh, I think there was a, a poll recently in one of the groups, like, and and we 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 beat every other option on the market, like by substantial margin. Like it was, I think we, we got like over 50% of the votes easily. That so, next question uh, actually follows up nicely. Uh, it's something we should address more. Um, is zero three four stage one proven to be faster than Unitronic stage one despite the higher horsepower? So for higher, B, this higher, is for B9 3.0. Yeah, higher horsepower, I mean, Dino charts are really tough to normalize. Yeah, any, you can't, you can't say their their tune makes higher horsepower. Ours is, has gone much faster in the quarter mile than that. So I don't know how you would say that uh, theirs has more power. You know, there's, there's companies out there. Uh, I know APR is notorious for this. They'll get a a stock car in, dyno it on their dyno, and say like, "Oh, the factory numbers are way underrated. Look, it makes 50 more than stock." Mm -hmm. So they you know crank up the the stock power numbers, and then all of a sudden their tune numbers yeah. make. You know, it looks like they make a bunch more power than everyone else because their base numbers are skewed more than everyone else to start with. So it's dyno numbers are really tough to compare to. We we have them up as a reference. We, we um, you know, we we baseline all of these stock cars. We we have some some you know well developed methods to try and extrapolate to the crank power. Thus far, all of the cars we put on our dyno, the extrapolation to crank power makes sense. Yeah. Um, we have not dynoed a car that makes, you know, like more wheel horsepower than crank. Uh, the, the corrections where we typically apply have lined up really well compared to the factory published numbers. So where APR and some of these other calibrators or, or, or you know, tuning firms get their numbers from, I don't know. Yeah. So, so I mean, um, so the question is, is 034 stage one proven to be fast and unitronic? Yes, it has been proven. <laughs> How does how how do you how is one tune faster than another? Well, it makes more power. But I mean, that's that's about when you're talking about uh, per hour trap speed. That's that's a really good indication of power. And I don't think any other tune on the market is even close to ours. I think the, the closest is four miles an hour, which is a lot. Yeah. Um, and then the second part of the question says, despite the higher horsepower, well. If you're if you're referring to one dyno chart on the internet versus another, that's not how horsepower is determined. So yeah. the quarter mile acceleration performance is how horsepower is determined. That's why uh, you know we 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 have our own dyno facility here. We 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 measure all of our tunes on the dyno, and our dyno charts um, are smooth and averaged from an aggregate of various yeah. samples. Yeah, we, do. we don't just take the highest horsepower tune one night at 11 p.m. when it's 33 degrees outside. And we don't put that on our website as how much power these tunes make. So we would actually take the highest and lowest out of the data set. And then we would focus on the aggregate of data that that you know, falls within yep. the, the, the bulk range of what our average customers. Yeah, we, have, we have a pretty obnoxious amount of data sets that we have to go through and we do, we, we will normalize an average um, multiple polls together so that you get, yeah. a, you know, the best representation we can, we can put together of what this will do on a dyno um, for you. And I can't think of many cases where we missed the mark. Yeah. And it's, 
we've had a customer dynoed their stage one E85 and got the exact same wheel horsepower yeah, that we were that's right, and yeah. one more foot pound of torque. Yeah. Right. I mean, this is the way, like, which, we, which is kind of lucky. We don't, because every car is different, but it, yeah. it, it also goes to show that, you know, we put a lot of work into getting you, numbers, you know, as accurate a number as we can, but we don't, you know, we're not going to sit there and overlay it on anyone else's dyno because that doesn't make, yeah, doesn't mean anything. So we can't speak for what, a, what any other tuner does. You know, we, we can say that there's some other tuning companies that do this really badly and really disingenuously. What what are advertised figures, they're not to show what, what the peak or maximum your car will make. They're they're to show the the average consistent result that any customer could expect. Our goal would be for most of our customers to make more power than that. And sometimes there's gonna be customers that fall below that, but but in a in a small, relatively tight range around that. And and we we see sometimes two two exact cars from the factory that can make up to ten percent, fifteen percent. We just went through this with the RS five when we were yeah. trying to baseline the RS five. We had mm -hmm. three different RS fives on the dyno. They made three different powers. Quite a bit different. Um, you know, and I guess luckily ours landed right in the middle. Um, yeah, but you know, it's it's there's a lot of variance and a lot of factors at play with these. Yeah, and, and we we do have a an upgrade program for switching tunes. Yep, yeah. and. Um, Again, I, I, we're competitors to Unitronic. I like Unitronic. I think they're a professional company. I like the owners. I know them. Uh, we're, I would consider us friends. I'd go out to dinner with them. But we've had lots of their customers upgrades our tuning, and the, the feedback has been unanimously very positive. Somebody's actually asking if we've ever dined out a competitor's file. We do, we do not. Uh, we really try we, not to we, focus the on The only time I ever really saw, like, competitor dinos on our dyno was when we used to do dino day stuff yeah, years ago stuff. Um, um, but we haven't done that for quite a while we we're, we we focus on on us we do we you know we calibrate these to what we feel is you know the correct power up the correct method um so no, yeah we, and then j just just to button up this conversation real quick making a lot of power is actually pretty easy so we yeah. we happen to be making the most power currently i'm sure someone else will figure out how to do it soon um, but, but what you also get that you don't typically get is the refinement, the reliability, the OEM quality, the, the keeping, uh, and integrating of safety features, just like the factory tunes have, um, you know, so if you want to go out and compare all of our tunes, you, you will, for example, in the Dazzle world, right? It's really easy to make as much power as the stock turbo can produce on a Dazzle, stock Dazzle turbo. Uh, the hard part is everything else. So, you know, the, the brute force maximum power, just turn the boost up as high as you the can. Single gear rip. Yep. And that's, that's easy. So the, the key is, you know, to do everything else well. And unfortunately there's no dyno for smoothness, for drivability, for reliability, um, you know, for, for, for throttle response and control, um, you know, for boost control, well, no, yeah, all that stuff. There's know, no dyno for. We that. had the RS5 at, uh, out at Thunder Hill last weekend, mm -hmm. and the tuning wasn't power output related. It was throttle control, throttle refinement. That's what we, mid, you know, come stuff. backing out of the throttle mid corner. You know, just a couple mm -hmm. percent. You need to get you know a, a nice amount of control there on the pedal, and you know that's the stuff we're working on. We're at the track with these things. I'm going to say probably more than anyone else, um, not because we're yeah. we're you know track junkies, but because that's really where we can we can refine these extremes and these extents of the, the power delivery. Uh, well, I, I know of one three lettered uh, competitor of ours, they take their cars to the track for photo shoots. Yeah. So they're, they, you know, they drive around the track and take pretty photos, but they're not, they're not testing. They're not, um, you know, actually doing the engineering like we are. No, we've, we're generally laptop laden and, yeah. and, you know, smashing on these things all day.